Okay, I don't know if this is working. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Let's see. Um, this is my first time using Clubhouse, so I think I'm going to... Um, I've been told to use Clubhouse by a couple of people. A couple of people um, told me to use it, or more than a couple. Uh, some people don't know what it is, but um, my understanding is that it's basically an audio platform and you can bring people on and they can ask you a question in audio and I can answer back and we can have a conversation one-to-one. -one. People can line up and take turns and we can talk about tinnitus. Um, I can see there's some people in the room, which is... Uh, you can't text in this, can you? So you can't tell me if you can hear me. So I'm just going to assume that you can. Uh, what's up, Milad? What's going on? Are you uh, in Sweden at the moment? How's things? I actually had a... I tell you, guys, you know what? I'll tell you guys a story. Um, and I hope you can hear me. I'm going to walk around my house because um, I tend to think better when I walk. When I'm thinking about a video, I'll go for a walk. Um, I had a... Obviously, I won't tell you the gentleman's name, but I, um, I do do... Um, paid Skype calls one-on-one -on -one for people who want private help and this is not me trying to push that, I'm just going to tell you a story. And um, so I had a call with this guy, um, lovely bloke, he was about mid-50s I believe and um, he was actually from Sweden and uh, he was a lovely guy and he'd had tinnitus for about eight years and, and in a recent year it had gotten progressively worse and um, he was incredibly wealthy. Now obviously he, I'm not going to tell you the industry he works in, I'm not going to tell you anything like that. But he had homes all over the world and he did very well and he was, he was very humble about it, nice guy. But the point of this story was that he had tinnitus and um, he had a form of hyperacusis where, you know, some people have hyperacusis where they'll, um, they'll be exposed to a certain frequency or a noise or a volume or if they're tired and they'll get ear pain from noise or they'll get an immediate spike. Whereas the, the volume of his tinnitus, which was oscillating, which means it was going like, ooh, that sort of thing from ear to ear, it increased to almost meet the volume of the external noise, whether it was someone doing the dishes or a car or a loud restaurant. He was actually telling me how he couldn't go enjoy. Imagine being so wealthy and yet unfortunately you couldn't enjoy it. Uh, but that's okay because I'm gonna silence his tinnitus as I've done with hundreds of people all over the world. I got the most successful tinnitus course on the planet. The video testimonials literally pour in. I can't even post them all fast enough. Text, audio, everything. It's, it's tinnitus not for life. But the point of the story is this guy is so rich, so rich. And he, before he found me, he consulted, you would imagine, the best of the best. He's got, okay. He would have thought, I've got this money, I'm going to go to the best and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, I'm going to fix it, I'm going to get silence, I'm going to get back to my life, I'm going to be a family man, I'm going to retire, I've worked so many hours, I'm going to enjoy my life. And he went to the best ENTs, otolaryngologists, neurotologists, psychiatrists, psychologists, neurologists, nephrologists, gastroenterologists, and guess what they all said? There is nothing you can do. You have to learn to live with tinnitus. Habituation is the only answer. What a load of fucking bullshit. And so he's come to me and I'm starting him off with my course and we had the call, he's gonna make some changes uh, and he's gonna get silence. I don't know how long it's gonna take, okay? Age does play a factor in silence. Now you've heard me say before, it does not matter how you got tinnitus. It doesn't matter how long you've had it. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how severe it is. It doesn't matter what your other symptoms are. It doesn't matter what medications you're on. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter anything, okay? You can still get silence. However, the stipulation of that comment is as follows. There will be a variation, variations in the approaches that you'll be required to take in order to obtain silence and also reverse hyperacusis, pulsatile tinnitus, vertigo, Meniere's disease, visual snow and hearing loss. You can reverse all of those, but it might take a little bit longer depending on what you've done in your life. Now, age, how does age play a role? And we're gonna to get to actually what you have to do in a second. I'm just, let me make sure I'm gonna get out my phone. Oh, there's a lot of people in the room. Great. What's this? Okay. All right. So is it, there's, what is this? Like 12 people in the room? Great. So guys, if you have any questions as I'm talking, uh, I hope you can hear me. If you have any questions, this is live by the way. If you have any questions as I'm talking, what you can actually do, oh, here we go. We've got someone who's raised their hand. All right, I'm going to bring this person in and he can ask a question. Hello, can you hear me? I think I've buggered this up. What have I done? Uh, hello, can you hear me? 
Mm, I think I've made a mistake here. Sorry guys, bear with, I'm just learning to use this. Uh, mate, if you, I've, I've got wired headphones in, and yes, I tell you guys, don't use headphones. Only use them if you need to, but I'm trying to walk around the house and talk and think, and these will come out as soon as this is done. I wish there was a text. I don't know if, I don't know if you could, Udain, Ud, Udhain. Let me just, sorry guys. Okay. What, what I've done is I've just turned off uh, raising the hand for the time being, just because uh, I'm going to turn it back on now. Sorry, guys. Okay, open to everyone. <clears throat> okay, so I've, I've um, allowed the um, uh, raising a hand. So I want to circle back to what I was saying before about the wealthy gentleman before. If anyone's just tuned in now, I'm I was just talking about a seriously wealthy man who's come to me for help. And that's because the, the training of an ENT is not conducive to actually silencing tinnitus. If you, if you, if you follow me a lot and you watch my videos, you're, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna recognize some of the things I'm saying because understanding the world of tinnitus and silence is actually very simple and there's some basic core tenets, okay? And these core tenets are, is as such. There's two of them. ENTs don't know shit and tinnitus is not for life, Okay? Now, if you're, I can't hear you, but you can hear me, so say it with me. Number one, ENTs don't know shit. And two, uh, tinnitus is not for life. Guys, when I say tinnitus, I also mean hyperacusis. I also mean pulsatile tinnitus. I also mean vertigo Meniere's disease, which is uh, dizziness, okay? I also mean hearing loss. I also mean visual snow. And just as a little bit of a benefit, when you follow my advice, and this is not a promise, but usually when people follow my advice, they go, holy shit, Liam. I, my vision has gotten better. My, the graying in my hair is gone. My skin is improved. My sleep is improved. My anxiety is gone. Uh, my husband is following your advice and his snoring is gone. Uh, I smell better, blah, blah, blah. Okay, all this stuff. Um, but the thing with the ENTs is the, I, I've worked with very, very famous people, incredibly famous in terms of movie actors. So when I went to Los Angeles, I actually ran ads uh, on Facebook and I had people come over to my little apartment, McKee's, loving McKee's, uh, uh, let me stay in one of her husband's and her spare apartments in uh, Los Angeles in, um, oh, where, where is it? Uh, next, to the, um, next to the pier in Los Angeles, goodness me, I can't even remember. Anyway, the point is I ran ads and famous people got in contact with me and one of them came over to my house and I went over to one of their homes and I'm talking about starstruck amazing. And they said, Liam, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> I can't fix this. I've been to the best ENTs. I've been to the best people. I spent $25,000. I'm rich. I'm famous. What the fuck do I do? And so I said, well, first of all, you got to understand these two things. And I said it to them. ENTs don't know shit. And tinnitus is not for life. Okay. And it's confusing for ENTs because they don't learn about anything really helpful when it comes to tinnitus. Now, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you would have seen uh, the post that I put up. I actually took it from another page and rebranded it. But the post was, uh, I don't know. Oh no, my tinnitus came from nowhere. I don't know where it came from. Of AKA idiopathic, idiopathic, idiopathic subjective tinnitus. Shut up. Okay, came from nowhere. Starter pack, and in that was things like sunscreen, AirPods. Um, uh, plant-based foods, and I would put actually all plants on the planet category, like oat milk, good Lord. Stop. Guys, if you are drinking oat milk right now, or almond milk, or any sort of like disgusting plant derivative milk or product, or you're doing green smoothies, or you think that fruit and plants and carbohydrates are healthy, and you think, oh, well, I need glucose in my body and my brain. Yes, that's why gluconeogenesis exists in the liver. It converts uh, protein and fat from animal products into glucose and gives your brain a steady stream because your brain does require glucose 24 hours a day in order to function. Yes, you do, but stop drinking that shit, okay? I have so many people who come to me um, who get tinnitus from veganism. They get it from veganism. And it's because of the oxalate, it's because of the salicylate, it's because of the goitrogen, uh, it's because of the lectins, and it's because you don't get any fucking anything from it. 
It doesn't have a complete amino acid profile. You can't absorb anything, okay? You think, oh, it's high in calcium. Well, to excess calcium anyway is a bad thing, but if you have oxalate, then oxalic acid is gonna bind with the calcium, turn it to insoluble crystals, lodge inside your nervous system, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you got polyridiculoneuropathy. Uh, polyridiculo neuropathy. Now you have a nervous system problem and you're gonna go and get cranial sacral therapy? Are you joking? Are you joking? The whole concept that relaxation cures tinnitus is a fucking joke. It is a joke, okay? It's, yes, I still advise people to do, when I say it's a joke, I mean only relaxation. That's the only thing, I'm gonna relax my nervous system, I'm gonna you know, relax and I'm gonna go do an ayahuasca trip and I'm gonna learn about myself and I'm gonna do some meditation and I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna get my chakras aligned. And look, I'm not shitting on that stuff, that's all great, but to think that you can make that one single change in your mindset and get silence is, does not work. It doesn't. It's like habituation. It's like when I see other products online and they say, oh, well, I'm just gonna habituate to it um, or, or no, sorry, I see other people selling their book. I get contacted by these companies now all the time, all the time, all day. I have these companies that come to me and say, and it's obviously obvious they've seen my testimonials and they're like, oh fuck, like we're, we, we don't have this amount of testimonials. We have 50, 20, 100 million dollars in funding because the rate of tinnitus is exploding. So big venture capitalists and people with money have realized this is, the industry is gonna be worth billions in the next five years, and it is because people keep getting these fucking vaccines. Um, it's insane. I mean, if, you, if you've got one of these vaccines, you need to look in the mirror and wake up to yourself because that shit is toxic, okay? Think about, think before you act. So they contact me and they say, hey, we'd like to offer you X amount of money to promote our product. And I say, get fucked and block them. Seriously, I tell them, get fucked, don't contact me again. You're a scam artist. Habituation is not silence. Living with tinnitus is not a life, okay? And you guys don't have to have that. So let's, let me get out my phone. I hope that you guys can hear me. Uh, so, I have, I, once again, I have someone who's put up their hand, but I don't know. Can you, oh, I wish there was a way to send a text. Um, oh yeah, let me see. Oh yeah, okay. So that mutes myself. Sorry guys, just bear with me as I figure this thing out. It's my first time using it, I apologize. <clears throat> yeah, okay, I'm sure you can hear me because you're still in the room. Um, let's, talk about, let's talk about how to silence tinnitus. Okay, so how do you silence tinnitus? First of all, you have to understand what tinnitus is. What is tinnitus? How does the ear function? Okay, so when I click my fingers or clap my hands, okay, that is actually vibration and energy going through the air, okay? It hits your outer ear, it goes down to your, down your ear canal, okay? Your, your ear is shaped in such a way that it, push, it pushes the air waves down into your ear canal, okay? And then it hits your eardrum, which is actually called the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane, okay? Now, now we're getting into the uh, middle ear. And in the middle ear, you have the three smallest bones in the body called the ossicles. And they are the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. The final bone, the stapes, you can't see my, I'm trying to describe this as, as I talk to you in audio. The state piece is sort of like a, a piston, if that's what you call it. Like if you see a car engine and those pistons are going up and down rapidly as, as, as the rate of acceleration increases, it's very similar in the ear, which is kind of cool how science mimics um, biology, isn't it? Anyway, so um, it pushes into what's called a bony structure and in that bony structure is the cochlear and the vestibular systems. Okay, vestibular for balance, cochlear for hearing. And inside of the cochlea, you have endolymph and perilymph, which is essentially liquid. And you have, okay, membranes all around there to allow for the pushing of the liquid. So you have stereocilia. Here we get to the fabled stereocilia. How many people have walked into an ENT's office and got a hearing test and been, and been told, oh, well, you have a bit of hearing loss in the spectrum of blah, 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 over here, point, it's always different, okay? And they say, oh, well, you have hearing loss here where your tinnitus is, and that's broken stereocilia. And when the stereocilia is broken, then you, your brain actually doesn't like gaps, so it fills in the gaps with phantom noises, okay, subjective tinnitus. 
And there's nothing you can do, have a nice life. Or you can pay me $6,000 to learn how to habituate. Also, do, whatever you do, don't look at that Liam guy. He's uh, cured many, many people with tinnitus, but fuck him, he's not a doctor, what would he know? That is literally what happens. I have had instances in Los Angeles, sitting in an, o- in an ENT's office with a woman that I'm helping. And she introduces me to him and says, hey, this is a guy that cured his own tinnitus with fasting, sunlight, grounding, muscle release, cold showers, eating more meat, getting away from blue light, so on and so forth. And you know what he said? Nothing. He didn't say shit. He just said, huh. Turns right back to the woman, McKees, and goes, anyway, so you should really buy these headpieces. Are you serious, dude? You guys listening now, if you think ENTs give a fuck about you, you are absolutely out of your mind. You are out of your mind. One of my best friends, Christian, who's a dentist, who was in Toronto with me for a while. Now he's in, went to Istanbul, and now he's in Poland, I believe. Um, he was saying that as he was doing uh, pre-med, you know, you do, go to high school, then you do uh, science, then you do pre-med, then you learn, uh, you do residency, then you specialize, and so on. And he was saying that the ENTs literally lick the assholes of, um, <clears throat> I forget the name, of, of the doctors in charge. Guys, I've told you this many, many times, read the book, The Wisdom of Psychopaths. Psychopaths desire money and power over people and adoration and love. And they gravitate towards, drum roll please, politicians, doctors, policemen, and one other thing. Um, But doctors, especially surgery. ENTs, get it's very hard to do, they get a lot of praise and a shit ton of money. The money that ENTs make is practically second to only spinal and brain surgery. It is absolutely out of this world. So I'm not saying every ENT is bad because they're not, but good Lord, even the good ones, once again, we'll circle back to what I was saying. They don't have the education in order to fix you. How do I know that? Why are you here then? Why are you listening to me right now? Because your ENTs couldn't help you. And I fix, I would say, I would honestly say, and this is, this is being conservative. I've probably fixed over a thousand people and got them silence. Most of which I wouldn't know about. You have no idea how many people contact me and say, oh, by the way, you, you cured my tonight a year ago and I still follow you because I think you're funny or I think you're interesting or I just want to keep up to date. I get those emails daily, daily. And some people just, people say, Liam, where are all the videos that you've got? Um, and uh, I say, well, people don't want to do videos. And unfortunately, I get a lot of people, and this is a bit sad, but people are people. They say, look, dude, if you help me one-on-one, uh, then I'll do you a video. And I say, yeah, that's sweet. That sounds good. Help them one-on-one for six months. And they say, yep, great. So I've got silence. I'll do you the video. I say, yeah. And I have to keep following them up. And then they just ignore me. And that's happened probably, I'd say, 25 times. So that's a bit depressing. Uh, by the way, no one owes me a video. But when you have an agreement like that, you know, it's time to be an adult. But whatever. Anyway. Back to the ears, so the stereocilia, um, by the way, I'm not saying that stereo, um, I, obviously stereocilia can break, but there is no study showing. You'd need to show me a study with a pretty serious cohort size that shows that if, if in any instance that any stereocilia breaks, that the person always gets tinnitus, and also when a person never has tinnitus in their life, that they've never broken a single stereocilia in their cochlea, because you also have cilia in your lungs, but we're talking about stereocilia. Doesn't exist, hasn't been proven. Okay, you would need, in my opinion, to know that your stereocilia has been broken, you would need to get some sort of electron microscopy done. That would involve cutting out your inner ear. Has anyone listening to this right now had their inner ear removed? You would be deaf instantly. They'd cut it out and say, oh, well, I guess it looks like your left ear actually didn't have any broken stereocilia, but now you're deaf. Have a nice life. I know people, and this is sick, I know people whose ENTs have literally severed the vestibular cochlear nerve in order to make them deaf because they couldn't deal with the tinnitus and the ENTs couldn't fix them. If that isn't malpractice, I don't know what is. Stop listening to your bloody ENTs. They don't know what they're talking about. And even if they want to help you, they can't. So anyway, now we get onto the um, mechanological transduction function of the, uh, the cell that's connected to the stereocilia. And you need adequate amounts of adenosine triphosphate and uh, ATP regulation. You need oxygen, you need minerals like copper and magnesium. 
Phosphorus, uh, you need lowered iron levels, lower calcium levels, so eat liver. Um, any supplement you have that has more calcium than magnesium, throw it out. Anything, any supplement you have that has more iron than um, copper, throw it out. If you're cooking with iron copware, throw it out. Co uh, if, you, sorry, if, you're, if you're cooking with iron cookware, throw it in the bin. Seriously, uh, just start steaming stuff and roasting stuff and you get the idea. Um, so it's actually a, an issue, tinnitus is actually an issue of mitochondrial regulation. And if you guys haven't seen this yet, there's a lot of pages popping up now saying, hey, it's not actually a stereocilia problem, it's a mitochondrial problem. You know why? Because my, and I guess you could call it research, but that's kind of insinuating that I'm a scientist or I'm a doctor or I've done you know, research, which I haven't, but my work, you can't ignore it anymore. You cannot ignore the fact that, that tinnitus is not a stereocilia problem, but more importantly, it's not for life. It's such a scam. This whole idea that tinnitus is for life is unbelievable. And these ENTs, all they do, you know what? You know what an ENT is best at regarding a tinnitus patient? You know what they're the best at? Holding, getting hope, holding its head under the water, getting a gun and blowing its brains out. <laughs> they brutally kill hope like nothing I have seen before like nothing I have ever seen before. That is almost like taught in an ENT's curriculum. As soon as you say the word tinnitus, they, they change and they go, no, nope, no, nope, I don't wanna hear it, I don't wanna hear it. There's nothing you can do, get out of my office. The guy that I spoke with, and I do an hour session for 250 US, but this is not a sale for that really, I'm just saying that's what I do. It's a lot cheaper than most ENTs, believe it or not, and I do an hour, they do 15 minutes. They do 15 minutes and a lot of the time they kick the people out of their office in seven minutes because they just don't care and they don't know how. Anyway, so how do you fix tinnitus, hyperacusis and so on? The first thing, in my opinion, the first things you need to deal with are environmental, topical and electromagnetic toxins. Mold, Wi-Fi, makeup, excuse me, uh, the quality of the water, these are the things, uh, dishwashing detergent, what, what, you, what you wash your clothes with, uh, what you spray your, your grass with in your home. These are the things that you need to handle first. Let me get my Kindle and tell you a book that everyone listening to this should get today. It's just waking up, hold on. It's a great book. Now, not everyone's gonna get everything right because the author of this book says that meat is bad for you and you should eat plants, so that's fucking stupid, don't do that. But everything else is amazing. Let me find it. Okay, it's called The Toxin Solution by, I lost it, Joseph Pizzorno. Let me go back to the front page, sorry. Joseph Pizzorno, okay? You should get the Toxin Solution by Joseph Pizzorno. Am I still live? I think I'm still live. Hold on, I'm just going to text. Because Faven was the one who put me onto this. I'm just going to text her and make sure that she can, everyone can hear me. Um, one sec, guys. So go and get that book. Okay, I'm going to see if she responds. Uh, Faven is the lovely girl that actually did me a video testimonial. And uh, she was great. I mean, that video was excellent. Thank you very much for that. Loved it. And I'm sure everyone else did too. Uh, okay, so environmental solutions. Ladies, if you are putting on the latest Kim Kardashian, I want to look like her and I want to get, you know, I got breast implants and I'm getting my hair dyed and I'm putting this shit on my face and I don't know what the hell women do. <laughs> like... <laughs> Ladies, if you're watching this, and the husbands who have to wait for three hours and be late for dinner by 45 minutes. <laughs> Ladies, we don't care. I actually, I'll tell you a story. I actually went out last night um, with some friends to a bar and um, I got there and uh, there was a girl that's usually there. And it's just a girl that, that my, my friend's dating and she's a pretty girl. She's, she's a pretty girl, she's lovely, good for him. And uh, I got there and she'd put all this makeup on her face and she looked fucking dreadful. And things weren't going too well with the guy for her. He was kind of like losing interest. And uh, this was like her, I don't know, her way of trying to get him back. And it just like fell on its face. So ladies, you gotta stop putting this heavy metal iron shaving shit on your face all day long. It's toxic, it's not doing you any good. I cannot tell you how many women have come to me and men, you know, modern 
boy George type men, whatever, that's fine. Go do your thing. Boss bitch, go girl. <laughs> Put this shit on their face and their hair and they get tinnitus. Your skin absorbs practically everything. Stop putting it on your face. Also, if you're if, if your time of the month during your period, you're obviously using tampons or most of you will be. Okay, stop it. I would much rather you use some sort of pad. And this is obviously a personal preference and I don't know everyone's hygiene story and, and you know, but I can tell you that a lot, a lot of some women, when they change from like a store-bought shitty tampon and they change to something else like a pad or a lot of the girls in Albania, I've heard, just use tissues. They put tissues down there to absorb it because it's more hygienic apparently. And I have women who change it and their tinnitus gets better because they stop putting shit inside of their vagina, which just instantly absorbed into their body. You've got to be very careful what you put on your skin, ladies. Hairsprays, bronzers, moisturizers, nail polish, eyeshadow, mascara, whatever. Like it's, a, it's like a laboratory you guys have, have going on. It's insane. Okay? And you don't look as good. Just, it's so forget about it. Okay? I know sex is great and you're still, you're still going to get it without it. Stop doing it. Water. If you are in the... Sh okay. Can I just say, please, when I tell you to do something, do it. Be reasonable. Okay? When I say, I don't mean just go run into it and even if you feel worse and awful, keep doing it. That's not what I'm saying. But if you look at my results and you look at how long I've been doing this and you look at all the lives I've changed, wouldn't it make sense to just please do what I say? What I hate is these two words, why and but. Just do this. Why? Oh, Google it. Look, look at my videos or Google it. I don't have time. I can... I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. Okay, the information's all there, you gotta put the work on. The next one, but, okay? I say, don't drink tap water. And you say, okay, but I live in, I live in Finland and it's the, best, it's the best water in the world. Oh my God, <laughs> I told you to do something, do it. Did you, do you know that, you know, women who take, uh, this is not a, a slight on women, I wanna, I wanna make that 100% clear, just so it's 100% clear, really. Women who take contraceptive pills, women, you shouldn't be putting that shit in your body anyway. Sorry if your boyfriends hate me after that, but you're ruining your hormones. It's also full of bromine. You're messing up your thyroid, so that's something to think about, okay? Use a, use a condom instead, even though it doesn't feel as good. Anyway, the point is, when a woman pees into a toilet, as humans do, obviously, the way the contraceptive pill works is it blasts the, um, the female with estrogen and it tricks the body into thinking that it's pregnant and so you cannot conceive a baby because the body's gone, well, we've already got a bun in the oven. Let's just not worry about that semen, right? That's sort of my really basic man understanding of that. You are urinating out excess estrogen. The water from a toilet goes through a desalination plant in every country in the world, and it filters out the urine and the feces and the bacteria and the parasites and the mold and whatever else you urinate out. That's great. It also takes the minerals. Good job. And it puts it through into your drinking supply. It cannot properly filter out all of the estrogen. So when you're, and also it cannot properly filter out all the antidepressants and SSRIs and corticosteroids and all this other shit. It might be in minuscule amounts, but if you've drank five cups of that shit every day for 45 years, what do you honestly think is going to happen? Guys, let me sit down for this. When I tell you to do something, be reasonable, don't be dangerous, don't go too fast. But for the love of God and Allah and Buddha, just fucking do it because it works, okay? And if you get out of your own way and you just do it, you can have silence. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I am definitely not saying it's going to be quick. And I'm not saying that your friends and family won't judge you. Faven, or Faven, Faven, actually, let me check that message and see if she checks it back. Hopefully you can hear me. She hasn't seen my message. No problem. Uh, okay, um, actually explained how her friends and family judged her and she was seeing a guy and the guy goes, oh, why, why, aren't you, why are you just having meat? Why don't you have this? Blah, blah, blah. And she basically said, Sh you know, shove it where the sun don't shine, sweetheart. I'm doing what I'm going to do and you can do what you're going to do. You know, a bit of independence, a bit of courage, a bit of backbone. And this, this excess estrogen in the body is going to turn you into a, a wussy for the men and the women are going to be hyper-feminized. I mean, too much of anything is not good, is it? You drink... You sit down and drink six liters of water in 10 minutes, you're going to have kidney problems, all right? You're going to have to be rushed to a nephrologist in the ER, probably, right? You're going to be thrown up all over the place. 
Anyway, cut out the environmental toxins. Mold, please go and get a urinary mycotoxin test. Test for black mold, test for aspergillus, okay? If you think that you've been exposed to mold, right? You think you've been exposed to mold, uh, whether it was 10 years ago, whether it was when you were 10 years old and you're 60 years now, mold, say it with me, mold does not leave the body until dealt with. If you, if you just go, you know what, I worked in a moldy office or I lived in a moldy home for five years, there's no point getting a urinary mycotoxin mold test because I know I've got it. Great, excellent attitude. Now go on YouTube and type in Jill Krista, J-I-L-L Krista, okay? Nasal spray concoction, get everything she says and start doing it, spraying it up your nose or do an inhalation. Do that, okay? Also, uh, ladies, I've, again with the ladies, I'm not big on you, I swear to God. But ladies, you know, tend to put more stuff in their body and on their body. You know how it is. It's, it is what it is. Breast implants are not good. Okay? I have many women who get them explanted and experience extreme reductions in their symptoms. Get rid of them. Okay. Now, let's move on to the... Everybody wants to know what to eat. What do you eat in order to get silence? Liam, what do I eat? Okay? First of all, let's talk about when to eat. Okay, don't even worry about fasting yet. Don't even worry, okay? When should you eat? When shouldn't you eat, okay? Personally, I would suggest that as soon as the sun goes down, you should not eat or drink anything after that. It will improve your sleep, okay? And you'll be stuffing less food in your face. And anything that improves your sleep is good by me. Now, what do you eat? I want to make it clear. <sighs> the obvious stuff like, you know, McDonald's and junk food and uh, Mars bars and Kit Kat, get rid of that shit, okay? Now what I want you to do first is I want you to cut out all alcohol, all caffeinated products. Caffeinated products could be things like teas, energy drinks, coffee, certain types of alcohol have caffeine in them like liqueurs and things like that. Uh, chocolate maybe, like if you have like a Ferrari Rocher, I don't think that has caffeine, does it? But you know what I'm saying, okay? People say, if you, if, if people say to me this, Liam, is it okay if I eat like, you know, pasta for lunch? And I say, okay, well, what were you having before? Or instead of what? And they say, oh, well, I was clinically obese and I used to eat McDonald's for lunch. I say, well, that's probably a better change. That's probably a much, much better change. So stop eating the junk food and start eating that. That's absolutely fine. Liam, what vegetables can I eat? First of all, cut out the nuts and fruit. You guys have, okay, let me put it to you guys, and sorry for the yelling, but I get real passionate and excited. I'm covering a lot of stuff in this video. I'm gonna, this is gonna be a replay of this. I'm gonna put it straight on my YouTube channel. It's gonna be fucking great. Okay, plants are not food. They're not food. Have you ever seen someone, have you, has anyone seen that photo of Michael Greger? He's what, 50 years old or something? The dude looks 80, he's falling apart. I want, to, I want to tell you something else, okay? In Chiang Mai, where I used to live, okay, there is a massive vegan summit every year. I've been there, I've been there not intentionally for the vegan summit, it just coincidentally happened to be occurring while I was there, unfortunately. Okay, and all the, all the people, the vegans that are like loved online, of course I won't name them, but like the big millions of followers of vegans, I see them there and guess what? They all eat meat. Every single one of them I saw eating meat. They think, they, they think you're a fucking joke. If you're a vegan and you're following them, they, they, they actually look at you like you're a fucking idiot. Because they obviously went vegan, probably for the best intentions, and then their health started to fall apart. And then they couldn't go back because they, they talk so much shit like d dairy, rape dairy, meat is murder, all this crap. And now they can't go back anymore. And so what do they do? They just, they don't want to lose the cash cow. <laughs> I don't know if vegans even use that word. It's probably like hate speech for them. Jesus Christ. But they can't go back. And so what do they do? They fucking lie to you. And they think you're idiots. And, you know, they're not right because they're, they're tricking you. But it's disgusting, isn't it? So be careful who you follow online. Seriously, especially when, you know, you don't know them. I know that's kind of ironic, me saying that, but the results are the results, aren't they? So, cut out the nuts, cut out the fruits, because the fruits are all genetically modified, and like a banana is not actually a banana. Bananas and watermelons are actually, sorry, quite tart in uh, the real world. 
in vegan fantasy land, you know, if we weren't killing cows, they'd be speaking English and dancing ballet in the fields, as we all know. That's a scientific fact. Cut that out. Okay, then start eating liver. Grass-fed, grass-finished liver. Now, if you can't get grass-fed, grass-finished, that is absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. Just get grain. That's fine. Because once again, Liam, it, when someone asks me, Liam, is it okay to get grain-fed liver? Then I say, well, compared to what? Instead of what? Well, you know, usually I would have like a, um, a big salad and some tuna. And I say, yes, absolutely, it's better. Now, I'm not saying you're going to have liver alone for a meal, okay? Now, the next thing we need to consider is something called the Randall cycle. The Randall cycle is an occurrence that occurs in the body, and I'm going to butcher this, by the way. So if you want to follow someone who's actually a nutritional scientist, who's a senior lecturer, a peer reviewer, and is, is bloody brilliant on the internet. His name is Bart K, K-A-Y. The Randall cycle is when you consume protein and fat with a form of plant food like carbohydrate. So for example, if you have, if you have let's say something like a, a hard boiled egg with rice, like an, like an Asian sort of dish, very good, like pork belly and rice, which is very common when I lived in Thailand. They had a lot of that. Um, uh, things like um, salmon and asparagus and tomatoes, that sort of thing. You kind of get what I'm getting at, right? Um, what I want you to do is I want you to do it. You can choose the days, but you want to separate these food groups because what happens when you combine them together and you eat them together, and you can Google this. Don't just take my word for it. Excuse me. You can Google it. I don't know if you can hear me walking around, by the way. I love talking when I'm walking. Um, you can Google it and it actually causes an, in, a, um, it, it inhibits your capacity to absorb nutrients. And these nutrients are um, vitamin A, heme iron, um, vitamin D, uh, things like docosahexaenoic acid, docosahexaenoic acid from seafood, uh, the amino acids, uh, saturated fat, all the good stuff that you need. Uh, things like copper, magnesium, phosphorus, uh, so on and so forth. You're not going to absorb that properly if you have a steak. Uh, like a good example is if you have a if you have a steak, and then you have like a chocolate mousse for dessert, you just fucked it all up. That was just a waste. Don't even have a steak. So if you, what I would suggest doing, and this is what I suggested to the gentleman that I spoke to who's from Sweden, is I would actually suggest uh, having one food group one day and another food group another day. So one food group could be you can have any animal products together, like eggs, pork, fish. Um, I do recommend that people cut out dairy just because some people don't tend to do well with dairy. Look, some people do well with like raw dairy or ghee. Um, it's, you know, it's a case by case basis, isn't it? But let's focus on the obvious stuff. Uh, carbohydrates are not food. There is no such thing, okay, as a good carbohydrate. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's brown rice. It's not white, so it's okay. Bullshit. It all breaks down to glucose in the body and too much glucose in the bloodstream is toxic for your cells. Your nervous system is made up of cells. Guess what's going to happen if you have too much glucose in the body? Demyelination of the myelin sheets that wrap your nervous system. You need a functioning nervous system in order for um, the electrical impulses to go from the stereocilia, okay, using the mechanoelectrical transduction. By the way, the mechanoelectrical transduction is the term used to convert vibration into electricity. It needs a lot of adenosine triphosphate. The endoplasmic reticulum also plays a role in that, but it's, you know, I'll go into that passes it through the vestibular cochlear nerve into the auditory regions of the brain where you process the phenomenon of hearing and that's how you're hearing me right now. If you have too much glucose in the body, demyelination occurs and uh, not all the messages can be sent. Hello, you've got hearing loss now. You use AirPods, it messes up with the calcium gating in the cells. Not going to function properly. Hello, you've got hearing loss. You put sunscreen on, you're not going to get adequate amount of... The, the vitamin D is actually a hormone. Oh shit. <laughs> vitamin D is... Let me just learn how to walk. Vitamin D is a hormone, okay? Basically, every cellular process in the body, including the electron, trans chain, uh, electron chain transport inside of the cells, an intracellular complex inside the mitochondria, the mitochondria is an organelle inside the cells, and there's thousands, thousands of them in each cell, okay? Requires vitamin D. It also requires copper. It also requires magnesium. These are two very, very important minerals in, in terms of regulating adenosine triphosphate, ADP and ATP. You need these things to function. If you're blocking yourself from the sun, if you believe 
that the sun causes skin cancer, you are out of your fucking mind. Now, let me say, if you eat a very, very heavy diet of plants and salicylate, especially salicylate in plants, and you go out in the sun, you're going to give yourself skin cancer. You will. But what's doing that? Sure, you can say that the sun is part of it, but if you don't eat these salicylates, and you can, I've had people from Ireland with hair as, as red as anything go into the sun and get burnt in 10 minutes. They cut out salicylates and basically all plants and just eat meat, and they can go out in the sun all day long when they go on holiday. So is it really the sun that's causing skin cancer? Or is it because you're following the food pyramid that your shit fucking doctor gets told to promote in medical school? Okay? When, anyone's, when you say to someone, what should I eat? And they say, a balanced diet. Congratulations, that person has no idea what they're talking about. Okay. Let's see. I'll keep going on what to do. But I want to see if... Um, uh, okay, okay. Fevin said you can hear me, so... That's good, because I've been talking for a while. Um, 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 um. Da, 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 da. Okay. Can, okay, Fevin, I've just accepted you into the... Oh, you can, can you hear me? Did you want to come in and say something, or how are you doing? No. I heard a little something there. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't want to talk. That's fine. Or maybe I've done Hi, something. Hi, hi, Dan. Oh. Hey, what's going on? How are you? I'm sorry, the, the network was cutting up a little bit, that's why. No, no, that's fine. Thanks for coming on. Okay, I just wanted to say to everyone, am I saying it right? Is it Fevin? It's Faven, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So Faven is someone that um, actually did, I think you were my most recent uh, video that I, um, that I put up. You did a great video and you were telling people how... Um, you sort of basically told your parents to get stuffed and you saw people commenting on my videos and saying, <laughs> oh, it's too hard or it's taking too long. Do you want to, you don't have to, but do you want to talk like a tiny bit about what you did and how you silenced it or do you have a question or something? Or, of or course, I would like to share. I don't mind. Uh, right, okay. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure what I'm about to say is going to give some sort of support to the people listening. Yeah. Um, yeah. I kind of. I actually reversed my tinnitus and my hearing loss. Uh, right. It feels amazing, and I actually applied all of Liam's advice. And I just want to say to you guys, even though this guy uh, curses or gets mad, it's because <laughs> only he cares. Because that kind of gives me motivation. You know, like when I was listening to you, like every time he cursed, like I kind of took it positively because nobody would care. Uh, yeah. if you don't have some sort of emotional reaction, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, so, that's yeah. the thing. Because you, you go to an ENT and it's almost like they're reading from a script. You know, like as I was, I was saying before, as soon as they hear the word tinnitus, mm -hmm. their, their critical thinking just, just um, turns off and this sort of thing turns on in their brain where mm -hmm. they go, okay, what did I learn in medical school? we learned that tinnitus is for life, even though there's no proof of that. And so they don't want to hear what you have to say. And they basically can't wait to get you out of the room. That's mm -hmm. how it goes down. I know. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I just want to say that like, uh, you're doing great. And I would like to share that uh, some of the things that you were saying actually makes sense about the sunlight, uh, about as a woman, like what we, what we do to ourselves really react upon us. Let's say the makeup about what you just said, the tampon, everything. Hygiene is really important. I silence in this, not only what we eat, but only what we see, what we uh, consume, what we drink. Everything counts at silence in my tinnitus because that's how it worked for me in a short period of time. And sunlight is really important. You guys, if you guys are hearing this, like you got to get up in the morning and get a sunlight. Even in the afternoon, you got to be able to get a sunlight because that is like a really true medicine. We have to get a sunlight. Yeah, there's a um, sunlight is so important. And I know you live in Ethiopia, so you would have yeah. had plenty of sun. And I know there's a there's a book. Uh, there's an author, actually, rather. There's a guy called Andreas Moritz. Mm -hmm. I think that's his name. And he wrote a book on the gallbladder cleanse. And he also wrote a book about sunlight. And he was explaining how people who had all of these crazy diseases, like they had cataracts and 
cancer and uh, you know jack cruz talks about this too with diabetes and sunlight and when you're under blue light too much you can actually exacerbate uh, glucose problems and uh, insulin sensitivity can go down which isn't always good <laughs> and andres moritz talks about these old i think they were german and they used to take people up into the mountains and literally strip them naked and they would lay on the ground so they're grounding and getting sun and they would wow. basically cure all these diseases just by getting like from sun up to sundown exactly. and they would just and you know it, you got to think like when you watch the television like mainstream media and you listen to doctors and what they've been taught by their corrupt education and they say the sun is poison with sunscreen it's almost like a guarantee like I'll just do the mm -hmm. opposite I'll, I'll do the opposite and I'll be healthy it's, exactly it's, yeah and uh, yeah finally what you said about the um especially with women I think Liam went out, you guys. This is unusual. Uh, anybody would like to, to ask me questions? I'm someone who actually silenced my tinnitus, so instead of zooming out, you guys can uh, raise your hands and you guys can ask me anything you want. Uh, how I silence my tinnitus and my hearing loss. You guys are welcome. <laughs> Anybody would like to ask questions? Um, okay, so I think Liam left. Um, I'm actually a tinnitus survivor. So let me just tell you a little bit about my story. Uh, I'm the one who actually uh, posted a video recently on uh, silencing my tinnitus and how my journey was. So I just want to tell you guys a little bit about myself and how I, uh, how I actually uh, uh, stopped my tinnitus and got my silence. So I just want to tell you guys, uh, you guys have to get a silence because you guys deserve it. I feel like people who go through tinnitus has to learn so much because I've learned so much from my tinnitus and I never thought I would cure it, but I did. So I just wanna tell you guys that um, please take as much as time to be off screen because the screen that we're using in our phone, like 24 seven staring at our phones, that, that can re literally mess up with our head. I'm sorry with my English, I'm from Ethiopia actually, so English is my second language, so don't mind my grammar. But I just wanna tell you guys that to, um, to be really careful about what you're gonna do in silencing your tinnitus. Let's say you have to wake up early in the morning, you have to be able to get the, silent, the sunlight, you have to be able to see the sun rising even that just feels great. You have to be able to read some self-help books. Uh, for instance, for me, The Secret and The Greatest Secret helped me mentally uh, in silencing my tinnitus. Uh, eating uh, around 10 because I, it's good not to, I didn't eat soon as I wake up. Like I just wake up, I meditate, I do a little bit of yoga for 10 minutes and then I get a sun bath and that's when I eat. And please consume a lot of water. For me, I actually drink four liters of water per I day. Think, sorry, and, I, uh, sorry. That's how it worked. Uh, plus, uh, can you hear? I think my, please. sorry, just, just interrupt real quick. My, um, my, what's it called? Clubhouse just turned off. I'm so sorry. But you were, you were obviously, everyone was listening. Sorry, keep going. But I'm back now. I apologize. Keep going. Liam, are you here? <laughs> yes, I'm I back. I just wanted yeah. to. Yeah, sorry. I don't want your audiences to, to 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 log out. That's why I was trying to. No, yeah, it's it's weird. It just it just switched off, and it said all of a sudden there was only three people listening. So I thought, okay, well, everyone's just had enough. <laughs> I'll just. Oh uh, okay. yeah. Uh, so you. Anyways, please go on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll go on. Yeah. Well, on the um, thanks for talking for that time. I I I was. You know, it's funny. I was talking the whole time, 
And I thought that people were listening to me, but I was just talking to myself. <laughs> you actually went out, out of the and I was like, oh, uh, I became a moderator, so let me uh, just talk. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks for doing that. Thanks yeah, for, you're thanks welcome. For carrying on. Carrying on with you. Okay, well, what I was going to do anyway is just wrap it up. I was just going to end it because I've been talking for a while, and I'm sure you covered some great stuff, so I'm going to listen back to that as well. So for everyone listening, um, uh, give Faven a big thanks, and thank you for coming. And what I'm going to do is I might do a tiered system where... The people who've paid for my course, I might hold these privately for them. And those conversations, you can come on and talk to me like Faven has. But obviously, there's people who still have tinnitus can ask questions. Uh, and that will be private with the other members and myself. But for the free stuff, uh, which I'll do as well, uh, you can come on and ask questions live. Uh, and not everyone's going to get a go, unlike the paid one. But when you do come on live for the free stuff, the trade-off is that I'm going to be putting it on YouTube. So you can get the questions answered, but you know, it'll be used for, for me, for marketing and also to share your story and there's a, something like a bit of content sort of thing. Okay, so I hope everyone had a lovely time today. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Faven, for jumping in there when I, my phone had an epileptic fit and I was talking to myself like an idiot for like five minutes. But uh, I'm going to end the room. And remember, guys, tinnitus is not for life. If you're new here, go visit my YouTube channel, Liam Stops Tinnitus, and I have another one, Tinnitus Treatment. And go on my Instagram, Liam Stops Tinnitus. There's plenty of testimonials there. Your ENT is not always right. In fact, they're practically always wrong. And uh, have a lovely day, guys. Okay, Fabian, do you want to say goodbye as well or anything to You're end? You're welcome. With? Goodbye, you guys. Thank you. Okay, bye, guys. Have a lovely time.